To be successful in clinical exams, there are a number of key principles that you should know in terms of presenting clinical cases. All of us have to present cases on ward rounds to our consultants or to our colleagues uh, or in the exams. And doing that well is a skill that you can learn. Now, I would like to teach you a few principles that could give structure to these presentations. I want to put the word structure here because I think this is really key. This is something that could relieve a lot of stress to have a system of presentation, a system that you could always fall back on every single time. And I've just experienced in my own years as a student, but I've also noticed this um, being an examiner for many undergraduate and postgraduate students, that those guys who have structure often do much better, they think more clearly, and their ability to reason about a patient is better. So what I'd like you to remember in terms of what you are busy doing when you are presenting a case. Well, one of the things you are doing is that you are conveying information. So you are transferring information that you have gathered. Let's say you have gathered some clues as to the mystery of whatever the patient's disease is. You've done that through history taking and clinical examination. And now you have collected this information and you have put it into a format that must be concise, clear, but also show good reasoning and good thinking. I often tell my, my students that I'm more interested to hear how they think and reason than in what they know. You know, it's easy to lo learn a lot of facts, but to actually put those facts together in a very well-reasoned manner, that is what matters. So let's get to the, let's, let's, let's really get to the issue here, and I think this is what you will enjoy. And it's very simple, but very powerful. So whenever you present a patient, and let's use um, diabetes mellitus as an example, and I'm going to show you uh, later in this video how you can use it in on any particular disease. So let's say a patient has diabetes mellitus. Now on the most basic level, let's say on the we, we, we're talking about the highest level of presentation here. On the very lowest level, you could say the patient is ill. Now that is not very helpful because that the patient can tell you, uh, him or herself, I'm ill. And in an exam, you won't get any marks for that. So you need to take it to a higher level. So what is the next level? Well, the next level would be something like, you could say, uh, this is a 35-year-old patient with diabetes. Now, once again, that would not be incorrect, but that could go to a higher level. What would the next level be? Well, this patient doesn't just have diabetes. Uh, he or she, she has diabetes mellitus. And you can see that we are now clarifying the diabetes or we're taking it to the next level. And in this manner, you could go on and on and you can say, all right, diabetes mellitus type. And then we could say that it could be type one or type two. And at the next level, we could say this has been diagnosed in 2005 and is, and now let's go to the next level. We can say this is well or poorly controlled. Well or poorly controlled. Controlled. Right. And let's take it further. Diabetes mellitus, type 1 or 2, and you, will, you can just change that for particular patient in front of you, well or poorly controlled. Once again, you choose the one relevant to your patient on, and here you can say oral, anti-diabetic therapy, or insulin, or both perhaps. And then the next level would be with or without, let's just put plus or minus, with or without micro, or macro 
vascular vascular complications. So what you can see here is that I've actually given you a formula of moving from a sorry let me just continue max complications this is a formula to go from a simple word like diabetes to diabetes diabetes mellitus type 1 or 2 diagnosed in 2005 well or poorly controlled on oral insulin oral treatment or insulin or both plus or minus micro or macro vascular complications now this is a high level diagnosis now the, the good thing about this is one when you present like this you tell the examiner that not only do I know that what diabetes mellitus is but I know that there is the a type 1 and there is a type 2 I have found the information about when it was diagnosed I have talked to the patient about their compliance and control and maybe different admissions to hospital that it may point to poor control I have considered the drugs that they are on and I have looked for all the complications so on the one hand, you are now showing your thinking, your reasoning. Secondly, this structure, let's move to the structure here, is a nice way to, mem to, to remember what to ask and what to look for. And why do I say that? Well, let's just quickly try and apply this to another condition. So let's say we have a patient with hypertension. So I could just as well, and let's just say this is hypertension, I could say this is a patient with primary or essential or secondary hypertension diagnosed in 2004. And then I can use the same sort of words, well or poorly controlled, just like we did there, well or poorly controlled. And let's not write everything out here. On one, two, three, or four drugs with or without, plus or minus, the following complications. Left ventricular hypertrophy, for instance, renal failure, whatever the case may be. So you can use the same structure, just putting another disease in, changing the medication, and whatever complications you have, and you can immediately remember all those different aspects of this disease, um, and how to do it. And I'd like you to practice. Go and try something like uh, epilepsy, for instance, and see if you can do the same with epilepsy or asthma or perhaps uh, something like an anemia. These are all nice examples of diseases, and I, I must actually tell you that you can put almost any disease into this framework and it will help you structure and remember how to present a patient at the highest level. And that is really, um, you can just see your marks going up as you present from a very, lay, very laid back, simple, this patient has diabetes, to the person who get uh, a very good mark for giving this complete high level description. Okay, so this is something to go out and practice. Practice it with your friends, write it down when you make your notes on your patients in the ward and see whether this is not something that could actually help you a lot. And I think at the end of the day, what is most in what is our key? Who is going to benefit? Well, we want smiling patients. They are the ones that will benefit from you remembering exactly what to do, what to look for and what to think about about their disease. All the best with your clinical skills.